Hi all, welcome to my studio today where I get to work with Arteza paints and my favorite processes of jelly printing and collage. So here I have a jelly plate, a well-used jelly plate in front of you here. It's one of my favorite sizes. It's eight by uh, 10, I believe it is. And I just showed you a stack of tissue paper, wrapping tissue paper. I get it at the dollar store. It comes in a bundle of like 50 sheets or something. I absolutely love jelly printing with this paper. First of all, it's very inexpensive, so you can just play with Wild Abandon with the, um, the paper, and yet it makes such a translucent, beautiful print uh, when you go to collage with it. So here I put the Arteza white and then the black down. I had a little bit too much down, so I removed a little bit there. And so I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to bray out a thin layer of the white first. The trick here with jelly printing, um, especially my techniques, is that not too much and not too little. You want enough on the plate that there's moisture and it's a nice layer, but not so much that the paper, the the paint is just sloshing around on the plate. And when you go to pick it up, you've got all these sort of peaks and valleys that you're dealing with. You really want it to have like a nice smooth mono print sort of feel to it. So um, not too much paint. Here, I love doing this type of process. I call it my Mark Rothko process for color fields. Uh, I love the, uh, the artist Mark Rothko's work. And this makes some incredibly beautiful backgrounds for your collages or to work other kinds of surfaces on top of. So you can see there that the pool was just beautiful and I love the inconsistencies in it and sort of the overlays of color. Just think that when you're creating a background, it just makes for such a, a much more interesting um, background and we're not going for perfection here. We can have a little bit of grunge and imperfection going on and still work with it. So here we have the black, the white again, and then the Aztec gold, which is my absolute favorite Arteza color. That Aztec gold is incredible. And when you work and print with it, when it dries, it's even more beautiful and brilliant. I use a lot of that in my work. So here I'm just putting another piece down, of course, smoothing it out with my hand. And here we have another lift. Now, when you see the, the, the bits and pieces missing, sort of like you notice how the color is building up on the plate, that's a part of my technique. I do not clean the plates in between. I have something what I, I call the old wall technique. I'm known for that. A lot of people who follow me love old wells, walls as well. So <laughs> we all get along here with this type of technique, but it leaves a lot of texture and variety. And to make backgrounds with these, to be able to work on top of, it's incredible. I work with the Punchinella because I like the fact that I get these holes. I, I find the various sizes and they're just fun to work with. It makes a, a background that's um, kind of picks up an irregular pattern. You saw where I had just a, a piece of uh, tissue paper that already just had a black color field on it, which I had previously printed. And now I've just laid this down just to get these subtle dot patterns over the top of it. And then when this is, you know, torn up into pieces and what have you, it makes beautiful collage elements. So here we're working with stencils. I like working with the Punchinella, but you can work with any of your favorite stencils to do the same thing. Um, because we're just creating as much variation as we can as we move into making uh, papers that we can collage with. So here you can see the bottom didn't pick up as well. Probably needed a little bit more paint down there because those holes are so much smaller, but it did transfer a little bit. And so here it gives me that kind of inconsistency and pattern that I like. Now we're going to move along to the grunge photo transfer, as I call it. Working with magazines, you can actually transfer these images using um, the jelly plate and a dark ink. In this case, I'm going to go with the black or the dark paints, um, the, the black acrylic. And the secret here is that you have to just get a nice layer. Here again, not too thick, not too thin. And some magazines work better than others. And this is definitely a trial and error process. 
After you work with several magazine types, you'll find the ones that seem to have the best carbon in the inks that are laying on the surface there because that's what's sort of sticking to the acrylic paints and transfers the image. I call it the grunge because you'll see a lot of that texture has built up on the plate. So you're going to see a lot of um, pot marking and what have you in there like pitting and I like that. Sort of gives a look of an old plate or a plate that's been pulled over and over again in the printing process. You kind of start getting that that buildup of um, holes and stuff on there. So that printed pretty well. You can see there's a there's a lot of inconsistencies that didn't print, but that's why I call it the grunge technique because there are always bits and pieces of the print that you can use. And I find that if you stress yourself out, especially with this photo transfer technique, trying to get it perfect you really lose the opportunity just to enjoy it and walk away with images that just work really well in the collage um, for subtle elements and what have you. So you can see here her glasses and uh, top came out well, but the rest of it didn't show up that good. But, you know, we can use that as an element in the print. Now this one, you'll see I'm lifting it up and then I noticed not too much of her face got, so I just rubbed it a little bit more. So I try to bring the balance between not rubbing it too hard and not too much nail while wow, you see it was just the right amount there. So now we can see that that's going to pull up uh, pretty well. But yet I still have that pot marking on there. You can certainly clean your plate in between and have a clean plate. But because I'm always going for an old world kind of look, this reminds me of like 60s and 70s typography um, printing and you know, that sort of old, you know, kind of reproduction, photocopy stuff and what have you. I just love that. So that is what I'm incorporating in. And I wanted to show this technique today because I think it's a fun way to get into photo transfers where you can just play and look at every bit of a print and see, oh, I can use that or that piece works without feeling like the whole thing is just a failure. And here that one pulled off really nicely. But yet I still have all my pot marking and stuff in there that I like. So that print will go to good use. Now, in between, you may want to clean your plate. You know, you may feel, well, I'm getting a little bit too much build up on this, Robin. You know, what do I do about it? So here we're just going to use some packing tape. It's a quick and easy way to clean your jelly plate. In fact, I clean my entire plate like this when I'm ready to. You just take the packing tape, lay it down. Um, and you can use a clear, you can use the brown, you know, just as long as it's a, as it's a sticky tape, um, this will work. And you lay it down and you just kind of keep on moving it around the plate and pulling it up, using your fingers to really burnish it. And uh, it'll start pulling it up on the tape. This particular packing tape is not that aggressive. I'm going to say it's probably an inexpensive one, but the, the stronger the the tapes you know the more um expensive or you know the more name brands they are stickier and they'll pull up even faster but this one's working so anything you have that's along this line you'll find that all these dots will just you just kind of go around the plate and you can pick them up and so you may want to leave some you may want some of it but not um all of it that was building up so this technique allows you to clean your plate without getting any oil on it because baby oil is, or mineral is one of the ways you can clean the plate or using a baby wipe and all that because those type of things also change the moisture level on the plate. And if I want to keep on printing, I don't want my plate to dry out and then I've got to start over to build the moisture levels in the gelatin up. So I really like this way of doing it. So now we're going to come up to one of my fave uh, techniques, and I call it glazing. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Literally, I put a thin layer of color. One of my favorites is, I love this pearl white in the metallic of the um, Arteza. And here I've just taken a old cheap paper, school paper, which I um, coffee stained. And then I ran it through my printer and photocopied that image on it. And then I just put this really light layer of glaze. And you can see it's it's spotty, kind of gives that old aged look. 
And that's how it's supposed to do because when I want to integrate this in my prints where I may have other jelly printing, other paints, I find just having that little layer of acrylic on it is enough just to integrate the print so that it works well with other pieces um, of paper that may have jelly printing on it and that kind of thing. Now here, this glacier blue, the metallics, I love, 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 love this color. And you'll see exactly what it's going to do to that black and white photocopy. You saw how crisp black and white that photocopy was. Now when you pull it, when I pull this, you're going to see, look how rich and beautiful that blue is. And it just transforms this print. It just gives it a whole nother quality that I love. And so you can just take, you know, photocopies of images and things that you like, and then do these glazing techniques on it and it just integrates it and takes it and elevates it from being just a photocopy. It gives it a little bit more importance. Now we're going to go into the collaging. I'm going to work with a few elements that we just finished printing. And here I've taken one of the backgrounds and I'm just kind of getting rid of those edges and I'm going to use this as the background for my collage. And that's why I call those original images that we did in the beginning, you know, background prints. And that way, it doesn't need to hear again, we're not worrying about any imperfections or anything. I'm laying it down and I'm just taking and making slight pencil marks on the four sides so that I can actually put all of the glue down on the substrate that is the most stable, which is the mixed media paper from Arteza. And this Tissue paper, which is, you know, it curls up, you know, can rip. It's a lot going on with it. I just put it around the edges. So now when I lay it down, I'll get a good glue adhere adhesion, but I'm not fooling around with trying to get that paper to be cooperative. So here I realize I almost put it down uh, upside down. So I wanted that the more grunge, you know, uneven piece at the top and put the weightier part of the background at the bottom. So here I'm using the bone folder. Just to bone fold out some of the wrinkles and what have you. Make it smooth. And I just love working with this tissue paper. You see, you'll see how easy it is. But when we're done, it's just going to be so beautiful. Now I'm just going to hold my fingers close to my image and just rip around it. That's just a little trick if you're ripping and you want to get that torn edge. You um, just kind of hold your fingers close to the part of the image that you're tearing and that way you keep from tearing into the image. So I'm going to rip this down a little bit on that side. And um, I really like getting keeping a bit of the black around it. So I like being able to see the contrast of that blue glaze surface, but you see at the top and around some of the edges, we still see a bit of the black and I like that. So now I'm gonna look at the prints that we did earlier. And so the one that had the five kisses, I'm gonna take that piece out. I think I'm gonna work with that phrase. So I'm just using my ruler and just you know tearing it out and then when I kind of lay it down sort of decide that I really don't want the whole piece of the quote I just want the word kisses so I'm going to rip that out and that's why I call this intuitive collage you know just grab your elements we've just printed a lot of stuff up none of this is is precious the, the papers are inexpensive and just you know sit down and and just let go with it allow your impulses to begin to put the images together. You can see I also tore out the face from the image that we printed. And then at the bottom there, I tore a bit of the, um, the text out from that same one that had the five kisses on it. Here I have a piece of um, goss paper. I love working with that paper. And, um, uh, it's the silver, so I wanted to keep the colors cool in this particular collage. And now I'm just laying down some text from some of the handmade papers that, you know, you can get at the art supply or the paper, paper stores and what have you. This, these are 
from India. Just playing around to see where I want that placement. I think I like that. And then I'm going to put the, the word kisses down there. And let's see. I feel like I needed something else in that top upper right-hand corner. So I'm taking that piece and doing that. And then I have this little odd piece there that has some of my intuitive scripting on it right there. And it just has that right bit, of, that piece right there, the right piece of gr bit of grunge and, you know, the torn hole. And this is on some Japanese calligraphy paper that I had tea stained and then printed on top of. So you can see I committed the entire collage um, to paper, gluing it all down. And now I'm just laying this last piece over top. And this is what you can do, just bits and pieces of your own papers that you have to finish things off. And I just love it. I really like the way this came out. You guys see it, you were able to see all these pieces being created. And it's just that easy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.